Hi, welcome to uh, the Journal live stream. We're here live uh, this afternoon with uh, Nuala Deering, a uh, psychosexual therapist. Thanks for coming by. Um, so it's obviously we're coming up to Valentine's Day. Uh, we've been asking for your questions. Uh, we put an article up last night. If you still want to get involved, uh, you can still email Sinead at thejournal.ie and tweet us at the journal. Uh, we're pretty easy to find on the internet. Um, so Nuala, first, uh, let's get into it. You're a psychosexual therapist. You're a counsellor. Tell us a bit about what you do. Okay. Um, I'm a couple counsellor, I suppose, first, and a psychosexual therapist. That's mostly what I do, and I do some psychotherapy. Um, I work, uh, my website is mindwise.ie, and I work for Relationships Ireland, uh, who also um, are a relationship uh, counselling organisation and provide sex therapy as well. Okay, tell us a bit more about Relationships Ireland, that end of things. Okay, um, in Relationships Ireland, it's a non profit making organisation uh, that provides counselling for uh, couples, individuals, teenagers, um, and um, it's been around for 50 years. Mm. All professional counsellors are involved in it, and it's um, it's available for people as well who actually can't afford. Now there there is a fee, the same mm. as there would be with anybody else. But people who really can't afford to actually pay can actually go to Relationships Ireland and get counselling. So it's a really good service. Yeah, and Relationships Ireland is the place is to go. Is the place to go for details. Great. Yeah. Um, so uh, the reason we asked you to come in here, and thanks very much for coming in, mm -hmm. um, is because we are, of course, coming up to Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. So sex and relationships, something that's on people's mind at the moment. Um, so, I mean, I suppose speaking generally about Valentine's Day, uh, is it something that can, I suppose, throw uh, a relationship into focus? Is there a lot of pressure on people coming up to the day itself? Yeah, I think there can be a lot of pressure. I think even in new relationships where people don't really know where they stand with each other, I think it can put them under a lot of pressure. If, if one person arrives with a, a big gift and the other person is not really sure where they stand in the relationship, that can be a lot of pressure. And it can also be pressure on relationships that are more long term, um, if the relationship isn't going very well and, um, and one person tries to cover up by actually just buying gifts and flowers and all that, but they don't really deal with what the issues are, mm. that can be a pressure as well. So if people are coming up to Valentine's Day and they, a lot of people dread it, mm. um, a lot of people just kind of let it fall by the wayside, but mm. if people are coming up to Valentine's Day um, and the relationship isn't on solid ground at the moment mm. and they're just worried about how the day is going to go, they're worried it might mm. be awkward, yeah. uh, what's the advice for them? Well, I think it's a great opportunity for people to actually um, talk about this beforehand and say, mm. look, what's the expectation from the day? Mm. You know, this is the way things are between us, and make a decision between us, between them, how they want to actually um, be on that day. Whether they want to go out, whether they buy, want to buy each other's buy each other gifts, or whether they actually need to sit down and talk about is there a problem here? Should we do something about it? Yeah, you were telling me earlier about uh, um, uh, somebody told you that if her husband actually made a big deal about Valentine's Day, she might be offended. Yeah, absolutely, because she, that, that particular person would have felt that there were a lot of issues in the relationship that he was not actually prepared to, to look at or deal with. And her gift for Valentine's Day would have, be, would have been that he would sit down and say, look, we, we need to talk about this. Yeah. Uh, um, by the way, just a reminder again, if you have any questions for Nula, uh, you can email Sinead at thejournal.ie. You can also tweet us at the journal, um, and we'll be getting to your uh, reactions and your follow-up questions later on. Um, we move on to some of the kind of the broader questions okay. people were bringing up. Um, so the most common question, and I'm sure you know what's coming, is that uh, people asked, uh, am I normal, essentially? Uh, how frequently um, should I be having sex? Is there a normal amount for people? Um, all, all that sort of issue. Yeah. Um, there isn't actually a normal amount for people to have sex, a normal amount of times during the week or during the month. But if, um, if a couple actually are not having sex frequently, they are more likely to have problems mm. in their relationship and in their sexual relationship. So um, you hear some people might have sex once a week, twice a week. Some might have four or five times a week. It depends on what stage of their relationship mm. they're at. If they're at the early romantic stage, it's going to be maybe five or six or seven times, maybe more. Mm. But that's not the case for everybody. Yeah. Um, so it is important though to make it a habit. You know, even when you have children and when you're busy, if you get out of the habit of having sex, it's like every other habit. You just um, forget about it. It's put on the back burner. It's not prioritised, and it does have a very negative impact on the relationship. And once people get out of what they call the, the honeymoon period, the first maybe 12, mm. 18 months uh, of yeah. a relationship, uh, and they settle down, I suppose, mm. to uh, 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 
to what for them is a normal frequency. Does that remain a constant throughout a long relationship or does it ebb and flow? It ebbs and flows, absolutely, mm. because I mean after a couple of years you might be out of the honeymoon period but now you might have a, a baby on the way mm. or you might have, had ch you might have children. Yeah. So that's going to change things, particularly for the woman in that situation. It's going to mm. take them a little bit of time to get back on track and they might have body image issues and different things to deal with, um, weight and that and they might feel self-conscious. and So it does ebb and flow. Uh, and is that disparity, um, I suppose, a disparity in sex drive? between two people and a couple. It was that a pretty frequent source of uh, conflict? Yes, it is. I'd say that, you know, disparity of desire is probably the second most common um, issue that people would bring up, mm. in, you know, in sex therapy. And it's very common, very frequent. It's very hard for two people to get their desire right at the same time. Yeah. So it has to be something that's um, negotiated and worked on. It's not just spontaneous. Uh, you said that was the second most most uh, common thing. What's the first yeah, most common? Yeah, and uh, lack of desire is probably the most problem. The top of the list when it comes to sexual. Right. So similar. Yeah. Uh, so so essentially, just one party in the relationship who just isn't interested at yes, all. Yes, isn't interested. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, some more of our questions we have. Um, I suppose we were talking the office Fifty Shades of Grey mm -hmm. uh, is is coming out this weekend, and it's um, all over the cinemas, all over the newspapers, magazines, online, wherever else, everywhere you look. There's Signs of buses going by with mm -hmm. um, Fifty Shades of Grey in it. Um, a couple of decades ago, we were still banning books in this country and banning magazines. Mm -hmm. um, do you think Irish people are more comfortable talking about sex than they used to be? Um, it's not what I would experience when people come in for couple counselling or for sex therapy. They still feel quite shy mm -hmm. about sex. Uh, even young people in yeah. their twenties would still feel very shy, feel very awkward or embarrassed about talking about sex. I think we talk more about it out there in the media and socially. We, you know, there's a lot of banter about it, but when it comes to a relationship and communicating about needs and desires and what the person isn't happy with, I think that's a different story. Mm. Have we improved at all over the years? I think we have improved. We mm. have to say we have improved because there's more out there and people talk a little bit more about it. So we have to have improved a bit. I hope we have. Yeah, uh, and I suppose once people come through your door, um, and they're there and they're, they they get comfortable. Once they get going, uh, I'd, I'd imagine they're off. Yeah. <clears throat> there's really, I think there's a little bit of a, a stigma around going maybe for people to get help around sex, but actually when they get started, it becomes much easier for them, and you, they're usually so pleased that they've actually done it because it, it, they get more comfortable. It opens up their ability to communicate better with their partners, and uh, it becomes easier. It's like anything that we do and talk about over and over again. We become more comfortable with it. Sure. I'm um, moving on to some of our, our readers' yep. questions, and um, on the subject of Fifty Shades, I'm going to mm -hmm. jump in the, the deep end, so to speak. Um, an email we got in last night. I've been going out with my boyfriend for three years. I've brought up the subject of sex toys a few times. He'll talk about it for a bit, but he doesn't seem to want to pursue it. I'm feeling like we're a bit stuck in a rut. What should I do? Oh, yeah. uh, I suppose the bit there that I would um, kind of uh, hook into is the bit of the stuck in a rut. They're in a relationship for three years, they're stuck in a rut. It sounds to me like they can't communicate about their needs in the relationship. And that's what I, I think the concern would be more about rather than uh, the sex toys. I mean, he may not want to use them. You can't really force another person to do something they don't want to do, but they should try to communicate about it. And if, need, and if they need to, I mean, three years is a long time to be in a relationship. They yeah. could actually go and talk to somebody about it just to, to get the conversation going even. Yeah. It uh, would be worthwhile. Uh, you were mentioning earlier that um, intimacy outside of the bedroom is something that people yes. really need to think about. Yes. Um, uh, taking a holistic view of their relationship. Mm. Yeah, um, intimacy outside of the bedroom is crucial really for intimacy in the bedroom. I think men are able to switch on and off a little bit easier than women, you know, they might have an argument or they might take out the bins and come back in and, and say come on we'll have sex, but women are really not able to do that. A woman who's actually working and minding kids all day and, you know, not feeling sexy is not going to want to to jump into bed so mm. women need to be loved really to have sex they need to be taken care of and you know wooed during the day and maybe partner even doing something nice like saying sit down i'll make a cup of tea for you and take a little bit of time out but men are more likely to be able to to jump in at the deep end yeah. not uh, always but sometimes um I, and I, if people are having issues uh like that that, that reader who you emailed mm. in um how, how long 
should something be allowed slide before they should approach them for, for help? Yeah, I, I think really um, if a couple are really struggling and not having sex and not being able to talk about it for any longer than six months, they should really go and get help for it. Mm -hmm. Even to start getting help even through uh, a relationship counsellor, even if it's not a sex therapist. Um, because it doesn't get better. The longer you leave it, it gets harder and harder to communicate about sex. Yeah. And do you have people coming to you uh, looking for help who maybe haven't had sex in years, have had the same sexual problems for years yeah. and just haven't broached the subject yeah. with each other? Absolutely. You'd have people coming in that haven't had problems, that haven't had sex for, mm -hmm. for years and years. And finally, one person probably has had enough and they're saying, I'm not taking this anymore, the yeah. relationship has to end if we don't do something about it. So it's a really important thing if there isn't sex in the relationship and you're not happy about it, say something. Tell the partner that you're not happy about this, we have to do something about it. What would you classify as a sexless relationship? I suppose it, it doesn't have to be absolutely sexless for no, it to be termed no. as that. Well, some writers would say a sexless relationship is a relationship that has sex less than 10 times a year. That is actually sexless. Right. So that's, that's a few times a year and it's still considered sex yeah. sexless. Yeah, all right. So. Um, I, a lot of the questions we're getting in seem to be along the theme of being stuck in a rut. Another one from uh, from a woman, most of the questions we have oh. uh, were, were from women. Yeah. Um, uh, we've an all-round great relationship, but in the bedroom I feel like I'm doing all the work um, <clears throat> all the time. Uh, it's a change that came about really gradually. Any advice? Yeah. Well, I think the first thing about that particular um, caller is that if they have a really great relationship all around, they're in a really good place mm -hmm. to do something about it. Because if you have a strong relationship to start with, uh, they're the people that usually really take help very well. Mm -hmm. So if there's nothing, she, first of all, I think she should try and talk to him about it and ask what's going on mm -hmm. and communicate about it. And if nothing is happening, do something about it. Don't don't just leave it. Uh, question from another reader. Um, let me see this one here. Yeah, question from one. It says she's bugged by her uh, boyfriend going straight onto his phone after sex. But well, that's just disrespectful more than anything else. Uh, there was a good few questions yeah, about things like yeah. devices in the bedroom, laptops, yeah. and PCs yeah. and things like that. Yeah, I think it shows a lack of connection as well, though, mm -hmm. a lack of intimacy. I think. I mean. We all know that would be best leaving phones and any kind of devices, TV, mm. laptops, outside of the bedroom. Yeah. It's probably not good for our health, but certainly not good for the sex life either. Um, and really, it is um, can be quite, I think, upsetting for a partner if, if either the, the woman or the man goes on their phone straight after sex. I mean, that's a time when they can actually be close and connected. It's a very important time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, is that something you would, you'd advise couples uh, that just to make the bedroom just about two things, sleeping and sex, and get rid of everything else, just mm -hmm. have dark room, bed. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think devices, all that sort of thing, shouldn't really come into the bedroom, mm -hmm. if at all possible. I know that's a big ask for people nowadays, but really, you would be better off if you want to have a good relationship and have good sex. Uh, on a different subject, I'd be interested in getting some advice on getting back into having a sex life after a baby. Uh, how can a woman make herself feel more sexually attractive? How can her partner slash husband help? Okay, um, I think it takes a little bit of time after having a baby. Some women can go through difficult deliveries and it can take time for them to actually feel, actually um, be without even discomfort after having a baby. Um, I think a husband can help by being supportive, by uh, being positive, making nice comments, helping them to um, feel good about themselves and um, I think a woman can help by just trying to get herself back on track and making a bit of time for herself, asking mm. for time so that she can do things for herself yeah. and um, not to get into the habit for months and months afterwards of just not taking care of yourself. It's very easy when you have a baby to do nothing when you take care of the baby and to forget about yourself. So start taking a little bit of care of, of herself and um, going out if she can a little bit, starting to do a little bit of exercise gently, and I think bit by bit then, if you have a supportive partner, it should come around. I'd imagine that's in your top 10 of subjects people bring up here as it well. It is, yeah. yeah, it's a very common, mm. it's a very common subject really. Yeah. Um, uh, pornography was something people brought up a couple of times. Um, from an emailer, I'm worried my boyfriend of six years uh, could be addicted to porn. We don't live together, but even when I'm at his apartment, uh, for the day, I know he's sometimes spending his time, spending time on his laptop and masturbating. Uh, this is having a pretty disastrous effect uh, on our sex life. 
as, as you might imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, um, there are some people who use porn and they're not addicted to porn, and there are other people who use porn and they absolutely are addicted to porn. And porn causes a problem if it's actually affecting the intimate relationship between a couple. So if that, that person is saying that um, it's having disastrous effects on their relationship, it's really time for her to bring it up with him. He's not going to mention it. If he's got the addiction, he's just going to continue doing it unless he's you know, pulled up in other areas like at work. Mm -hmm. So she's the one that's going to have to make the call on this one. Yeah, I, is, is pornography these days especially something that is a subject of conflict in relationships? It is. It's much more of a conflict now than it used to be because it's so easy to access porn and it's interactive because mm -hmm. it's online porn and um, it comes up a lot in relationships, addiction to porn or mm. just using porn instead of being intimate. Mm. And it's a, it can be an avoidance of intimacy as well for men. Yeah. It's easier to, to uh, go online and masturbate to porn than yeah. it is to actually have a relationship with a partner and deal with all of the nuances of emotional stuff. Yeah, I mean, you, we're, you're, you read a lot of stories in America about young men in particular who yeah. aren't bothering relation, with relationships mm. because uh, they have the devices, they have the pornography, yeah. they have whatever else, and they just don't get into a relationship until yeah. they're in their late twenties or thirties. Yeah, but the problem with it then, when they get into a, a relationship in their late twenties and thirties, do they really know how to actually be intimate and connect with a partner? Mm. It's very unlikely if they haven't been doing it before that. Yeah, it's, uh, you're obviously getting all the wrong sort of advice from all the wrong advice. This. And yeah. w will an ordinary relationship with an ordinary human being be enough for you then? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, just some questions we were talking about in the office, um, just about kind of how things might have, might have changed these days. Mm -hmm. um, the average amount of dates people might go on before having sex. Yeah. Um, I mean, some people say that actually just after a few dates now they're expected almost to have sex. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty early on in the relationship and I think it can first of all put a lot of pressure on the male partner in a relationship. Mm. Um, sometimes they will say to you that, look, uh, I felt under so much pressure that I actually couldn't get an erection. And it can leave them then with the problem going forward that they feel they're a failure, there's something wrong with me because of this. Um, sorry, some more Twitter questions coming in. Thank okay. you, Nikki. Cheers. Um, sorry, remind me of that again, Dara. Oh, sorry, we were we, we were talking oh, about dates. Uh, the, yeah, dates. when people have dates. Yeah. Um, sorry, so, we're, by the way, yeah. if people want to tweet at the journal of with any questions for Nula, that we'll be wrapping up in a few minutes. Sorry yeah. about that. Okay, uh, so yeah, that's that's true, but, but that can put pressure on both sides, yeah. and I think it puts pressure on people as well not to be somebody else rather than themselves. It, mm. it certainly would be a better idea to get to know somebody first, and um, especially emotionally get to know somebody and. And intimately, I mean, as well, uh, you know, more on a um, kissing and hugging and pleasuring rather than mm -hmm. going for full sex straight away. Because I, mean, I suppose if people start having sex after about three or four dates, that could be all they're doing for the next yes, uh, six absolutely. months. absolutely. That mm -hmm. gets into that kind of a habit, like what we were talking about earlier, rather than um, other types of intimacy and, and fun and mm. getting to know each other. So you mightn't actually know the person properly after six months, all you know is to have sex with them. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And sex in itself alone will not maintain a, rela a relationship. Mm. There has to be emotional and intimacy and love and consideration and kindness as well. Um, I suppose uh, in the related area about new relationships, people were, were wondering, uh, do people in new relationships these days often ask partners, prospective partners, for to have sex tests, mm -hmm. uh, STI tests? Yeah, um, it's not something I'd come across as much because I don't work in that area of, of, uh, of that, but I think it's a good idea, especially if um, and it, I mean, the best idea is for for people to use condoms and protection at all time. But if if somebody is not comfortable about it, I think it's a very good idea to do that. Yeah. Um, something else we were discussing, um, just the relationship um, Irish people have with uh, sex and drink. Yeah. Um, how often is it for people to have sex with a new partner while they're out of their yeah. face, so to speak? Yeah, I think it is actually. Um, I think it's actually common mm. in this country that people actually, especially with first time um, sexual encounters that they will have been drinking, mm. um, and that can pose its own problems because as men well know if they've been drinking a lot they're going to have problems getting an erection so that can mm. leave them with a, an anxiety about that into the future. Mm. Um, you know, you may not even... Um, know the person without them having drink on them or know what it's like to have sex without without drink. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's common. There's yeah. no doubt about it. And um, I suppose the 
relationship with drink as a relationship to develops, um, I do find that the average Irish couple in a settled, normal relationship, so to speak, uh, do they, they very often end up having sex after a few drinks more frequently than any other time. I think it can happen after a night out and a few drinks. Yeah. You know, especially if they're maybe not having sex frequently and it's not easy for them, they probably turn to going out with a few drinks and then it might happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> something else we were talking about in the office, uh, sex tips for girls. Uh, the sex tips that uh, mm -hmm. you see in magazines for, for young women these days. Mm -hmm. uh, things like Cosmo um, yeah. and just the influence it might have on a, on a, a young woman as she becomes sexually active. Mm -hmm. uh, because very, very often you look at these and the amount of, you know, spitting and volleying and throwing mm -hmm. and dancing, you know, mm -hmm. people might end up thinking that heading into a relationship it's something more akin to a contact sport than anything else. Yeah. Um, I'm going to read you one of these out okay. uh, and try not to go bright scarlet. Um, hold his penis in one hand and lightly slap it with the other. You can tap it back and forth like you're volleying a tennis ball and lightly pinch the skin on his shaft and testicles. Many women make the mistake of being too gentle. Right. Yeah, is it, would you imagine many women make the mistake of being too gentle? Um. I'm no, no sorry. Sure about that. <laughs> the, 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 the question, I suppose, is: yeah. uh, Would tips like that be, um, maybe have a negative effect? I on think you'd nearly yeah. need to ask the guy that he'd be comfortable with that. Mm. Uh, you know, when you were talking about it, I thought, "Ouch!" But I mean, absolutely, in a relationship where a couple are together, I mean, they can experiment with different um, types of sexual acts, and that. but then you'd want to know who you're actually with. I, I, don't, I wouldn't advise that on the first date. To yeah, with not you. first time the gate. Out very well. Okay, right. Uh, we have a few questions on Twitter uh, before we wrap up. Um, I, uh, so I, I haven't uh, pre-screened any of these, but uh, hopefully someone else has. Okay. Um, I'm a 25-year-old male and I always seem to lose my erection when I put a condom on. Mm. Uh, that, that's literally it, there's no question, but I'd imagine we can yeah. I'd imagine what the question is. Well, that's, uh, that's uh, a very common problem for men. Mm -hmm you know, that they can lose their erection when they put a, con a condom on. It might be, it might point to a more, an underlying, you know, maybe anxiety around having an erection in the first place. Mm. So, um, I mean, if it's, if, if it has to be that they have to use a condom, if he's not in a, you know, in a relationship where they can use anything else, then <coughs> that's an issue for him, but yeah. it might be worth his while talking to somebody about that because there are plenty of ways you can actually work with actually maintaining an erection if you yeah. just do some work on it. So it's not something to be distressed about. It's something that can be can be worked on quite easily. Yeah. Sorry, just while you were talking there, I realised yeah. it's it's it's, uh, it's actually an email, and uh, there's more to it than that. So okay. let, let me just read the rest of it. Okay. Um, but I'd imagine uh, that advice probably stands. Uh, I'm, so this is the 25 year old who uh, mm -hmm. uh, always seems to lose his erection after putting a condom on. Um, I'm not in a relationship. I never really have been, and don't have sex very often. But I'm casually seeing someone at the moment, and I find that I'm putting off seeing her because I'm afraid I'll have another embarrassing incident when I when it comes to the bedroom. Mm. Uh, I know the problem can be mental, but it's difficult not to overthink it and worry. Uh, I don't think the condoms are ill-fitting, they're snug enough, but they feel restrictive. Mm. So, yeah. pretty much what you're saying. I think some of that, though, is about anxiety as well, because it sounds like he's a little bit concerned about meeting somebody and and anticipating that he's not going to be able to get an erection, so mm. worried about failure, really. Um, but it would be worth his while, you know, working on his confidence around that because it sounds to me like it's just around confidence and he can negotiate the other part when you're with somebody you can negotiate the other issues yeah but i mean so you just kind of have to address the elephant in the room absolutely just, yeah. just talk about it mm. and, and sort it out and find a way around it yeah. but for him it sounds to me like confidence mm. if he could build his confidence it's not a massive issue it doesn't mean there's anything particularly wrong with him it's a common thing okay um, um, th that's great. Uh, it looks like that's it for questions. So, I mean, so, suppose j just to finish up, coming to Valentine's Day, uh, the, the message for people to take away from this is uh, don't obsess about it, don't worry about it too much, and if they have a problem, focus on the intimacy inside the bedroom and out. Yes, and if, if you want to do the flowers and the chocolates and the everything else, enjoy it. It's great if you're in nothing a relationship that's absolutely nothing wrong with it. If you're in a relationship that's working and and you want to do that for each other, enjoy it. It's great to have breakfast in bed, you know, rolls and a box of chocolates. Absolutely. Enjoy it. Yeah, you all agree, I'm sure. That's yeah. great, Nuala. Thanks for coming in. You're welcome. Cheers.